Today we're beefing up the towing capacity on the Tundra. Welcome back everyone. I hope you guys are all staying healthy and safe. Now one of the primary reasons to end up getting the 22 Tundra was for the, its towing capacity just to be able to tow RVs, boats, trailers, all that jazz in general. And as some of you third gen Tundra owners may know, as soon as you put any you know, additional weight in the rear, whether you're towing or hauling, anything with extra weight, the rear end tends to sag quite a bit. Now what that will do is, you know, if you are towing and you know you're you have a saggy bottom, you're gonna have like a really uncomfortable ride that's not really safe. The ride's gonna be like super like jarry and like bumpy. If you are you know towing trailers, it can you know sway quite a bit. At nights your headlights will be pointing up into the sky. Just in general, it's gonna be a really bad time if you are squatting when you are towing. There is options of doing a weight distribution hitch. However, for me, what I decided to go with is rectify that problem by running this airlift kit right here over the weekend i towed with the tundra now the trailer that i towed did have a tongue weight of approximately 945 pounds it's just under 950 pounds i'll actually put specs of it on the screen right now so you know you guys can see exactly what it was what that did was it actually you know squatted the rear down by about six inches which is very aggressive i didn't even you know attempt to you know drive the truck with that because i knew it was just gonna be a really shitty ride um, instead, you know, we leveled it out with these guys right here. So I installed the airlift load lifter 5000 series um, airbag kit. Now this is not the ultimate, so it doesn't have the bump stop in here, which I really, you know, don't have a need for anyway. And I also paired it up with the wireless one um, air compressor kit with the easy mount. So I mean, this kit right here, 100% bolt on. It took me about an hour and a half to an hour 45 minutes to do the install with recording the video. So. It's extremely simple. I was able to do it with like very basic, you know, you know, hand tools. So, you know, this can be done in anyone's garage like really quickly. Highly recommend this to anyone, you know, that's actually, you know, out there towing or hauling on a daily basis with your guys' Tundra. So whether it's a work truck or, you know, daily driver, highly recommend it. Um, you know, the wireless one kit, it is, you know, not the cheapest, you know, but however, in my opinion, it's worth every penny just to be able to, you know, control your airbags, you know, on the go now we're gonna get into the install of both of these but before we do that um, just to give you guys some details so like I said I pulled a RV um, it was a um, 2019 Crossroads Zinger 328 SB I believe I'll throw all the details up on the screen now the specs on that trailer I know a lot of guys out there will say well the truck is way too small to be pulling that trailer you need you know you need a big old truck you know the Tundra did really well with it um, you know, for us from Salt Lake, we, you know, pull it up, you know, through Parley's Canyon, you know, through Park City, which is a, you know, fairly large, um, I would say incline, no problem at all, you know, braking, all that jazz, the truck did really, really well. And, you know, on that note, even though in, in most scenarios, you know, the engine might be able to handle, you know, the payload and, you know, the tone capacity, generally the suspension and uh, brakes is where you're really going to you know, hit a huge roadblock, and that's where something like this really comes into play. On the RV that I told, now the specs on that thing, it is just over 36 feet long. It's like 36 and a half feet long. Like I said, the tongue weight on it was about 950 pounds. I want to say it's like 940. So it's actually fairly heavy. With these guys, I'm um, aired up to about 89 to 90 um, PSI, so almost maxed out. Um, the truck was completely level and surprisingly even though these guys were at like you know 89 90 psi the ride was just i mean i don't want to say it was just like stock but i would say just a little bit maybe you know harsher than stock just a little bit but not really noticeable you know having someone in the truck that hasn't been in a truck before they would even you know never notice it um on the trailer itself, um, it's coming in just around like 8,000 pounds the way it was set up. You know, dry weight on that thing is like 76, 77 pounds. Um, it is about 11 and a half feet tall and like eight and a half feet wide. So overall, really large trailer uh, RV, but you know, the Tundra did perfect with it. And I would actually feel 100% comfortable, you know, taking it on a really long, you know, road trip as well. Not the short, like 150 miles that I did with it. The one, um, 
huge, huge, you know, complaint with this setup on the truck with towing a trailer that's that wide is the fact that I don't have the, you know, towing mirrors. So that's something I'm definitely going to have to throw on here is just having, you know, some extended mirrors, whether it's like manual ones or, you know, finding like the OEM ones to throw on here. That's going to be on the list for sure. Now, as far as, you know, overall with this kit, like I mentioned, for the price, if you guys are, you know, doing any sorts of towing, if you're doing, you know, any hauling on a daily basis, if it's a work truck, you know, daily driver that you're towing on the weekends, highly, highly recommend this. Um, even if you're not going to get the air compressor, just get, you know, these airbags, like, like I said, you know, I'm in love. So it just makes the truck a lot more usable in my opinion. Um, so with that being said on the installation, give yourself about, you know, two hours, basic hand tools. So with that, let's go ahead and get into the install. By lifting the truck and supporting the frame with jack stands. Then we will remove the factory bump stops from both sides by removing the three 12 millimeter bolts, one on the side of the frame and two on the bottom. Next, remove these plastic covers on each side of the frame. You can use a small pry bar or a screwdriver to pop them off. Then we need to remove this module from the frame on the passenger side. Remove the two 12 mm bolts and tuck the module to the side for now. Next, we need to attach the upper frame brackets to the frame using the provided M8 button head bolts. These brackets will attach the holes of the bump stop brackets we just removed, and these large corner holes should be facing the front. In this orientation, attach the upper bracket to the frame using the provided M8 button head cap screws, which will go through the wider spaced holes and into the frame holes from where we remove the bolts from the bump stops. Before tightening the M8 screws, place the upper brace onto the bracket and move them around until frame holes are all lined up. Then go ahead and tighten the M8 screws and set the upper bracket to the side for now. Up next, remove the bolts to hold the emergency brake cables to the axle. There is going to be one on each side. Next, we will assemble and prepare the air springs for installation. Start by installing the air fittings into the air spring by threading it on finger tight. Then finish tightening the fitting another one and a half turns with a half inch wrench. Place a roll plate on top of the air spring. Up next, take your upper spring plate and insert the two one inch carriage bolts into these two spots here. Then flip and place it on top of your air spring. The roll plate should keep the carriage bolts from falling out. And now attach the plate to the spring using the two button head screws and torque it to no more than 20 foot pounds. Flip the spring over and place a roll plate onto the spring. Then put the carriage bolts through the lower bracket as shown and attach the bracket assembly onto the air spring using the two 3 8 24 button head screws. For proper installation of assemblies, make sure that these tabs are on the opposite side of the air port or on the same side as the upper bracket notches. Next, we will install the air spring assemblies. To make the installation easier, we place jack stands on the frame and drop the rear diff and axle all the way down. Place the upper brace onto the bracket, then slide the air spring into place and add two serrated nuts to the short carriage bolts and finger tighten them. Then add the remaining carriage bolts and nuts and torque them down to 16 foot pounds. And add the flanged M8 bolt through the upper brace into the frame and torque to 18 foot pounds. On the passenger side, reattach the module which we removed to the upper bracket using the removed OEM bolts and the provided M8 washer and lock nut. Remove the OEM clips from the brake lines and flip them around and reinstall. This will push the brake lines towards the axle. Next, complete the lower mounting. Slip the lower clamp bar over the long carriage bolts, install a flat washer and nylon lock nut, and tighten the nuts evenly so the clamp bar is level. Ensure that there is adequate clearance between the carriage bolts and the brake lines. With the airbags now installed, we're going to move on to installing the air compressor. Start with the install, ensure all parts and components are included by referencing the install guide. We will start by connecting the wiring harness to the air compressor module. We will need to connect the red wire from the air compressor to the red wire on the wiring harness. Simply cut the ends off the red wires and connect using the provided butt slice. Add some heat to shrink it down and make it watertight. And now connect the wiring harness to the air compressor module. Next, we will mount the air compressor onto the truck. We will be mounting the air compressor onto the passenger side frame rail using the provided U-bolt. We will mount our Wireless One system behind this body channel here with the electric connector facing upwards. Slide the U-bolt over the frame rail. 
through the easy mount bracket and add two washers and tighten down with the nylon lock nuts. Now we need to connect a black ground wire to the frame rail. You can either drill into the rail and use the provided self-tapping screws, or in this case, if you mount your compressor in this location, there is a open tapped bolt hole on the frame rail, which we can use. I'll just sand it down a little to expose the bare metal and attach the ground wire here. Next, assemble the compressor inlet filter by twisting on the fitting. We'll keep this finger tight. In the future, to change out the filter, which are provided, use a small screwdriver to pop the cap off to gain access to the filter media. And now slide the provided airline over the fitting on the filter housing. Next, attach the filter housing in a relatively clean and dry location. For us, we're using the tree clip on the housing and attaching it to one of the holes on the body mount here. Then using a sharp razor or hose cutter, cut the air line to size and attach it to the air compressor. Now we're going to connect the air lines to the airbags and compressor. We will start by running an air line from the passenger side to the driver's side under the bed. We use this channel as a guide, then route the line towards the airbag and slide it into the top. Next we will cut the air line at a junction point where we will have the airline T. And now run the air line from the passenger airbag to the junction point. Connect both lines to the T and run the remaining air line to the air compressor. We just follow the top of the frame rail here and then connect it into the compressor. Next we're going to run the wiring harness up to the engine bay. We are running on top of the frame rail and following the brake lines all the way to the engine compartment, then up to the battery. With the wiring harness ran up to the battery, we are going to cut the red and black wires to size. There is also a pink wire. This wire is optional, which can be connected to the ignition switch by add a fuse to turn the air compressor on when the ignition is on. We will not use this wire, so that we can use the air compressor whenever we want by waking it up with the remote or mobile app. With the harness cut to size, we first need to connect the provided fuse to the red power cable. Simply cut the fuse cable and attach it to the wiring harness using the provided heat shrink butt connector and add the terminal connectors to the end of the red and black cables and secure the red connector to the positive and black to the negative connector on the battery. Next up, we can add the fuse to the fuse holder. Now we can test the system by pairing the remote to the compressor module and inflating the airbags. During this time, spray some soapy water on all fittings to ensure that there are no leaks. Also, at this point, you can download the free app for your iPhone or Android device to be able to control your wireless one system. Anyway, with that being said, you guys aren't here to listen to me talk. You want to see the install probably, so let's get into the install now. And there we have it for the install. Bye bye. And as I mentioned, 100% bolt on installation with this kit, which was really, really awesome. Um, you know, the location where I found, you know, on the frame rails and everything to mount like the ground wire. So, I mean, it was just like, it's perfect. It looks great. So, we'll see how it holds up. Um, you know, like I said, so far it's done really, really well. Um, I will be doing a lot of towing with this um, truck and one thing I do want to say as far as you know yes I am towing a you know very large trailer with this as far as like towing experience and all that you know I've got over you know 15 years you know towing you know consistently so we'll see how it does with a boat um, especially like with a larger boat you know to where they're like very much prone to like swing and all that so you know we'll do that here in the near future if there are certain trailers that you guys do want me to test out with the truck um, make sure to drop those down in the comments down below um i'll see if i can get a hand on something that's comparable to test it and also i think it would be worth it for me to pull off these um you know wheels and tires that i have on here and throw the stock tires on and then do some more tests you know that way because i feel like that's going to give us more accurate you know data and i believe that you know the truck will also perform better towing which is like you know factory you know wheels and tires on here Anyway, let me know what you guys think about the, you know, install, about the build so far. You know, what are you guys using your Tundras for? And I'm really curious if there is any, you know, second gen Tundra owners watching these videos. Um, 
are you guys earning you know more respect well has the truck earned more respect for you guys are you guys liking it more or are you still you know die hard die hard b8 fans anyway if you guys haven't already make sure to subscribe to the youtube channel drop us a like below a comment you know whatever it may be and you know until next time we'll see you bye